All right, what's going on, Giants fans? The Week 17, the finale of the 2020 New York Giants Offensive Line Report. Um, I'm going to give my final thoughts on just the position, uh, like player by player, what my thoughts of them are and what they should be going f- uh, forward at the end. Um, so, not going to do a ton of film. We have I have uh, six mi- six and a half minutes on Thomas, eight nine minutes on Lemieux. I figured those two are the rookies, so we can give them a little shine towards. Um, a film on week 17, the guys you want to see. Um, I have a Nick Gates highlight we'll, we'll, we'll go through. But I'll give my overall thoughts at the end. Um, and and I, I will say thank you at the end. I, I really do appreciate the support all this year. Now, the Thomas the Thomas clip is a retread of what I did for the Rookie Left Tackle video on the new Talking Football channel. I'll put the link in that for the in the description. If you could go subscribe to there, there's going to be some more broad NFL content. Um, some stuff in the playoffs going over O-line stuff on that channel. Uh, but it, it doesn't have many views at this point, so I figured I'd I would just uh, re- retread the Thomas portion of that. So today we're gonna I want to start with the two sacks though, and then we'll 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 get into it. So let's let's roll. And and there's this isn't something complicated. This is the one with the stunt. I mean, it's pretty simple here. So you got three for three right here. Deion Lewis realizes that he has 37, but he's backing up. He's like, all right, he cuts him. He cuts him. But Fleming, Alden Smith just gets that hook around Kevin Zeitler. Fleming's ready for it. Fleming's ready to take over this block. But Zeitler, he's just that arm under Alden, that arm, that Alden Smith arm under Zeitler. I think you could call that defensive holding, to be honest. But Zeitler's just not able to get over on it, which is kind, of, which is frustrating. But I don't know if they're gonna call. I don't know if they're ever gonna call that defensive holding. You know. What the hell? I must. Have, oh, I didn't. I didn't shorten this. All right. Well, whatever. Whatever, I'm not editing this. I'm not editing this. This one pisses me off. I don't know what Caden Smith is thinking on this. And they've this is the third time they've screwed this up. Like, let's watch Caden Smith on this. Who's he? I don't know, understand what he's thinking. Like, do you have somebody right in front of you? Listen, I get there might be miscommunications. I don't know if he thinks the running back is responsible for that. But what what's the point of what he does anyways? Like you see Alden Smith bounce down. Is, is he waiting for a blitzing linebacker and, and Jalen Smith? I don't, I don't know what he's thinking here. Now this this could be me assuming and you know Caden Smith and the, you know the Giants coaches watch this and say Bobby you're an idiot, you don't know what you're talking about. But to me I, it it feels like Caden Smith screwed up. I just have a hard time saying because when someone screws up that bad, sometimes I feel like I just there's something I'm not understanding. But I just don't see why he would see that guy directly outside of his outside shoulder. I get Alden Alden Smith is is here at this point, but you got Lemieux here, and you know maybe maybe you know if this guy comes and blitzes, Thomas comes off, but he's not showing that. So I just don't know what Caden Smith is thinking. Like, like, who did he think was going to be in protection for that? Is it Gallman? Did Gallman screw it up like he did against Arizona? I don't know. But that is so frustrating. So frustrating. All right, let's, um, I'm going to talk about Thomas more at the end. So let's, let's just play it and then, uh, we'll, we'll finish off with Lemieux and then uh, a Gates highlight. All right, first play, we're going to go through some pass reps. Good set. Keeps his hips square. Setting out towards him. And then the punch. Look as as Randy Gregory goes for that hand swipe. The punch. Brings brings his hands back for that punch. And then reloads. And anchors down. Now Gregory wants to go inside. Thomas, he's ready. I mean, this is just good. This this is just good athleticism and recovery. Where? 
That hand swipe, you know, he knows he knew that was coming from Randy Gregor. Hand swipe, move his hands, replace. Like up, oh, you want to you want to go back inside? Wham! I'm ready. I'm ready for you. Just playing the piano. Again, we're starting at the line mark. Keeping his hips somewhat square. Open up his hips a little bit. Punch is a little too early, but he doesn't overextend and lean. And he's only doing the one hand, so it's more of a feeler hand. So he's there. He's got his athleticism, so it's hard to see in the screen. Sorry, but you see Demarcus Lawrence spins. He's hoping, he's hoping at this point... That like week like you know the first time they matched up that Andrew Thomas is leaning and sloppy, and he goes to spin, and Thomas is just there waiting. Like dude, th this, I mean you're you're gonna have to do a better job than that. Ends up being a touchdown for the Giants. Again, this isn't like a perfect rep, but you you can just tell how much more calm he is, man. Get the punch. He even gets his punch a little late. Usually he's early, late. Gregory gets into his chest. But he's just he's but he gets his hands inside and the the hands that are inside win. So Gregory tries to disengage. And Thomas is just there, ready. So it's just good solid reps all game for him with, with Andrew Thomas. Again, hand fight. His hands have gotten a lot better. Got that left hand as a feeler. So as his defense is, you know, 97 gets into him. Anchors down. Does that hop step. Which he, he probably is the one who who's, who's done that the most. Like he did that at Georgia. That little hop step you'll see. When he feels that bull. When he feels that bull rush, does that hop step. Bam. Hop step. I mean, he's been do he's been doing that since training camp, since Georgia. Just hand fight, keeping inside. Good rep. This isn't the worst rep in the world, but it does. You know, Jones does get hit on this. It's a long developing pass, but he does get hit. Setting out towards him instead of vertically. I mean, he's just got those long arms. I mean, look how long those arms are, man. Like, you can't teach arm length. So, Alden goes to, you know, go inside. Instead of his foot dropping back down here and giving him a lane to the QB, the foot stays square. He just gets pushed back. I mean, and Jones is floating. So, this isn't, you know, this isn't the worst rep in the world, but, you know, Probably his worst rep of the game. And in the run game, look what they did. Look what they did. I remember after like week one or week two in this video, I was like, come on, let these guys do this. They let him pull. And he did a good job too. The guard screws this up. Does a good job. Listen, they say when you pull, you want to hear, you want to be able to smell these dudes' farts when you're running by. Tight around, I mean, that's tight around the corner. Engages on 92. Lib the guard Lemieux should have went here. Could have been a it could have been a really big play if, if he picks that up and you have a one on one with Gallman. But they let him pull, man. I like that. Let him they let him use his athleticism. And he just this this down block is beautiful. I mean, look where we're starting. And look where you're ending up. You're not you're not letting the defensive lineman get in the backfield. You're just straight moving this is just power power and it allows your running back to run right off your ass if the tight if the the lead blocker 82 does a better job you got yourself a nice little hole right here to go through i mean you're just this is this is earth moving i would say he's the most consistent in like movement now part of it is the scheme like the browns don't do a lot of this the jets don't even do a lot of this where they you know they're where they're closer to it but uh I, I say he, he he moves the guys the most Good combo here. Just smart. Smart player. Hip to hip with his guard. 
He's got his eyes on Sean Lee. Comes off. Again, 82 kind of screws this up. Caden Smith, backup tight end for the Giants. So, a good game against, uh, against Andrew Thomas. All right, Shane Lemieux in this game. Uh, in the past game, we'll go through. I thought he was all right for the most part. He did have a, a couple bad plays, um, but that's to be expected at this point with Lemieux. In the run game, though, um, you know, the one-on-one -on -one run blocks were good. Uh, you know, nothing nothing spectacular. He's been pretty consistent, though, in the run game, and especially as a puller in this game, it was uh, he had some missed assignments. It wasn't like he wasn't knowing how to block. He just had some missed assignments. Um, and there's one play where... It looks like he missed the assignment, but the defense kind of counters it pretty well. So we'll go through it, um, and then uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it. Talk about him as a player. Now this ball comes out quick, but he's got to. He places his hands a little bit right now because of his short arms. He's gonna have to like get a little more violent with that punch. But I like the way he breaks his, like, you see he's got his, these def, this defense lineman's got his hands on him. That's really Lemieux's biggest issue is he can't get the guy's hands off him sometimes. Watch how he's taking, he has his hands inside and he breaks them off of him. And then puts them back inside. Hand replacement. I mean, he's pretty good at that. It's about being consistent with it with his feet at the same time. Here's against Alden Smith. I mean, he's just there with him the whole, whole whole step of the way. Whole step of the way. What does that even mean? Playing the whole man. That's something we've talked about that he wasn't doing at the start. That's what something he has gone better at where he's helmet, helmet on a helmet. Hand replacement. Got that right hand. Left hand. Back. Just look. He's got that left hand stabbed out. Right hand ready. Ready for any kind of counter. Feet moving. Feet moving from side to side, which he kind of struggles with sometimes. Just ready for it. Now here's where Alden Smith gets him. This was this was the bad play. I mean, Alden Smith, you know, he's a really good defensive end, so it's not a great matchup anyways. But he's playing, you know, mostly basically the full man. And that's where he needs to get a little more violent on that first punch. Instead of placing his hands. Because he just takes... Alden Smith just takes those hands and... And rips right through. Or, you know, is able to, you know... Not even a full swim. He's just able to get his hands off of him. And I get he has short short arms. Versus Alden Smith who, you know, is an athletic freak. But when you're going against a guy like Alden Smith, like that last play, you gotta have your feet ready. You got to realize that as soon as you strike, he's going to have something for you. So have those feet ready. Here's a really good stunt pickup. So this is again with Alden Smith ready. Forces it off. Like, it stays with it. Stays with it. Make sure Gates has his guy. Make sure Gates has his guy. And as soon as the other defensive lineman loops around, I think that's DeMarco, Demarcus Lawrence, he's ready. He's ready. He doesn't have, you know, he's not facing, you know, to the right where this guy can, or Lawrence can loop around. Just steady, calm, cool, collected. So, that, I mean, that that's all I wanted to hit on the pass game. Here's in the run game, man. It was kind of <laughs> brutal. So like I said, this isn't about about him, you know, being athletic enough. You know, his hand punt, his hand strike strength. This is just the wrong assignment. And I get what he's looking at is like, hey, I have ninety two, but watch what happens because one ninety two is just reads it a little slow, and Sean Lee comes over the top. He goes to ninety two, but his job now, now that Sean Lee has flowed over the top. Is to pick up Sean Lee, and then by the time he gets there, Lee's making the tackle. So, I mean, they're not. I mean, this is. I think this is the first time all year they had Andrew Thomas pull to the opposite side, and he does a good job. 
Well, Lemieux screws that up. I mean, if Lemieux is able to make that block, if he hits right here, well, you know, I mean, this is still a good run. But, you know, Gallman has here. And if, if Lee stays here and, and Shane Lemieux sees him off and Gallman has a one-on-one with uh, with 30 and gets himself, you know, maybe an extra few yards. But Gallman turned that into eight yards. So, so at the end of the day, it was a good run play. So here's, this is a play they went, did earlier in the year against Philly. This is called squirm. And this defense alignment screws it up. Because <clears throat> what they're trying to do is leave two unblocked players. But they want to influence this defensive end to get upfield and then leave him unblocked as the trap for Shane Lemieux. But what the issue is, is watch. Kevin Zeitler's not trying to block this guy. See how he rips through? Like, Kevin Zeitler's not trying to block this guy. He's trying to get through to um, this linebacker. The idea of this is to leave both these guns unblocked and just get Lawrence right here. And then you have Shane Lemieux come and trap him right here. And then that gives Alfred Morris this gap right here. This gap right here. Zeitler seals this off. You got Cam Fleming right here. And like, yeah, is Lawrence unblocked, but he's not going to make that play. But because of that, Lemieux's target is now screwed up and he runs into Kevin Zeitler. Now you could say like, well, if that happens, you got to be able to loop around. But I mean, I, I think that's, like, I think that's you're thinking of things in a perfect world, looking back at it in hindsight, and not live, live action. Here's a good pull. I mean, this is, I mean, that's a really nice pull by Shane Lemieux. Yep, power O. And this is this is good because hey, this defensive end is slamming down. So instead of trying to get to his inside shoulder and then leave it to where Morris has a hole but or has the like bounce it and then the defensive end's there. Hit on his outside shoulder, Shane Lemieux. Caden is supposed to block here, doesn't really I mean gets in front of him but doesn't do a great job. And then when Demarcus Lawrence redirects, like we say, when they try and redirect, you bury. Just like take him where he wants, go with him. So that's a good pull. Here's another one where it's just bad assignment. Like maybe Ingram is supposed to leave this guy unblocked. I don't know. But somebody screwed this up, whether it's Lemieux or Ingram, because they both do what they're doing in, with confidence. Like Ingram feels like he has this, and Lemieux's eyes are on this player. Like this is the player that I'm blocking. Which in reality. Somebody was supposed to come up here. Whether that was Ingram to leave him unblocked or Lemieux was supposed to be a lead blocker. Somebody screwed this up and it stopped it from being a nice play. Actually, it was a nice play. Sorry. And then here's just a nice down block. Moving again. Look where we're starting. We're starting right under the football. I mean, you, you, Shane Lemieux has done his job on that play. So, overall thoughts on Shane Lemieux for his rookie season. I thought for a, a guy picked in the fifth round that, you know, was thrown in there, you know, week eight because of COVID for Will Hernandez, I thought he did good. Uh, I don't think he, sh he should be guaranteed a starting spot in 2021. I mean, I think you guys know where I stand with Will Hernandez, and we'll talk about it, the whole group as a whole at the end. But... He shows you enough to be excited about what he can be. I mean, he plays, he plays mean. He plays with a nasty streak. So if he puts in the work, gets a little stronger, gets that first punch, gets his feet working a little better, he can be a starting guard in the NFL for a, a long time and hopefully for the New York Giants. So um, at, at the very least, they have some really good depth with Shane Lemieux, and, and that's that's good for a fifth-round pick. But I, I, I think this guy has potential to grow. Uh, so... I, I view Shane Lemieux's rookie season as a success. No matter what my thoughts of Will Hernandez are, I view Shane Lemieux's rookie season as a success. All right. I want to finish off the 2020 O-line report uh, clips with this. Let's watch our center. Let's watch our center, who people were saying to bench for, bench for Spencer Pulley um, in, in week two. Remember that? Remember we said we should bench that guy for Spencer Pulley? 
<laughs> I love this guy. I'm sorry. I, he's he's my favorite player on this offense. I could give you some long breakdown where he's just finding someone to hit, lays him out, and what does he do next? After I mean, we've seen him beat Chippy all game. Just hey, like hey, dude, you, hey Xavier, would you like dragons? You <laughs> like that's a freaking picture right there. That is image of the year stuff right there for the New York Giants. Like you like dragons, <laughs> man. I, I like that guy. I like that guy. So let's finish it off with just overall thoughts on the guys who played on the offensive line. Seven guys. Seven guys. We'll start with Andrew Thomas. Man, I do the rookie left tackle videos, and I don't know much about Tristan Wirfs. I, I haven't watched him a ton. But if you're looking at Jedrick Wills and Mekhi Beck and Andrew Thomas, you look at the second half of the season, Andrew Thomas, to me, is clearly better than Jedrick Wills. And I view him and Becton as the same. Now, I think Becton has a little higher ceiling just because he's a mammoth, although he does have injury issues. But their second halves of the season were pretty close. And, you know, you can argue that Thomas was better. I mean, look at, you know, Thomas versus Miles Garrett, where Becton struggled with Miles Garrett. Um, so... It sucks that narratives get thing like first impressions mean everything in the NFL. So you know those other those three guys were doing good games one through eight while Andrew Thomas has struggles. But Andrew Thomas got better in season, not like going into year two and thinking hopefully it gets better. In season, he became awesome. He, this second half of the season for Andrew Thomas was awesome. Minus one fourth quarter versus Arizona with a lame duck QB. The fourth quarter was awesome. I'm very proud of him as I shake my computer. But I, I'm really proud of Andrew Thomas' rookie year. Okay, you, sh you should be too. Left guard, we'll go Shane Lemieux. Uh, you know, we, I just talked about him in, in the video, so I won't say much. For a rookie, fifth round pick, I am impressed. At the very least, we have a really good depth piece in Shane Lemieux. I'll be interesting to see what they do going forward. Nick Gates, man, he's my offensive MVP. He was the best offensive lineman. He was the most steady. He didn't miss a single snap. I mean, he was he was he was ready to rock this year. He was ready to rock this year, and people say, "Oh, he was most improved." I don't even buy that. You know what? When he played last year at guard and tackle, he was usually the best offensive lineman on the field. I mean, that first game of his first start at right tackle for the Jets, he was the best offensive lineman that day. I, I even wrote a blog for for SI when I was doing um, uh, Giants Maven or whatever they call it. So very proud of him, Kevin Zeitler. Zeitler wasn't. <sighs> He wasn't what I expected Kevin Zeitler to be. Okay, there was times where he messed up on stunts, and maybe that part of that was having Cam Fleming next to him. But there was times where I thought Zeitler struggled when he shouldn't. You know, week one against Pittsburgh was was really bad, but you're not going to go off of that. You know, um, if there's if there's one position group that the the COVID offseason offseason does affect, it is the offensive line. Um, going forward with Zeitler's, I know his con his contract was huge, so they may have to work something out. Um, but I also don't want to like losing Kevin Zeitler makes the Giants' offensive line worse. So I don't I don't want to do that. Cam Fleming, Cam Fleming got better as the year went along. Like he it never looked pretty with Cam Fleming, but there was games where he did his job. Like I said, it kind of looked out of control. He was never good in the run game. But Cam Fleming wasn't meant to start 16 games. He was meant to be the backup because of Nate Solder. Um, and honestly, if they didn't think Nate Solder was going to play this year. I bet you they probably bring back Mike Remmers um, at right tackle. But, you know, Mike Remmers didn't want to be a backup for the New York Giants, I don't think. Now, that, that's a lot of speculation. Will Hernandez, he has to go into 2021 as a starter or on another team. I don't know what the behind-the-scenes behind the stuff is. But he is too good of a player to start a season on the bench. I'm sorry. He's a good pass blocker. He's a good run blocker. He's an above-average guard. He's not going to live up to those second round hopes that we had where he's going to be, you know, an all pro pro bowl guard. He's not going to do that, but he is a solid good guard that would start on almost every team. So I don't know what's going on behind the scenes or if there's anything behind the scenes at all, but I don't think the New York giants can go into 2021 with him. Not as a starter, either start him or move on from him. Um, and then Matt Parrott, Matt Parrott has some stuff to work on, but it's stuff that is very fixable. And the guy, he just has natural strength Natural athleticism, and if he can f not open up the hips a little too early, um, work on his punch, those things are very correctable. He may be the starting right tackle week one. He's got to work on it, though. He's got to work on it. He hasn't proven it yet. But, I mean, almost every Matt K Matt Parrott game, we left thinking positive of him. So, listen, I, I'm not predicting this offensive line to be great 
in 2021. I think Andrew Thomas will be great. I think Nick Gates will be a you know top 10 center. Um, we'll see what happens with Zeitler with her you know the left the guard spot and then right tackle is a whole right now. I, I do view right tackle as a whole. Doesn't mean Matt Parrott can't develop into that guy. So I appreciate you guys watching these videos this year. I did this on a whim because of that Pittsburgh game. Uh, I remember everyone blaming the O-line. The O-line surely did, didn't play good in that game. But a lot of like Saquon's issues in that game where they just didn't block anybody on the backside. And I just wanted to bring context to it. I was like, hey, let me try this video. And you guys liked it. And I think it's because it is the position I know the most. So um, I, I, th I, I think it shows that I, I, I'm passionate about it. I'm at least semi-good at this. So I really do appreciate the support uh, for this. There's going to be more O-line content on the Talking Football channel. I'll put, I'll put the link for that in the description. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of fun off-season stuff. I'm going to the Senior Bowl practices in the, in a couple weeks. So hopefully I'll be able to do some breakdowns of those guys and their one-on-one -on -one drills. So thank you for supporting this year. I appreciate you guys. See you week one next year. Let's go Big Blue.